All right, welcome back. Now, everywhere around the world, people, they actually enjoy and dance to African music. Now, if we not promote our own music for inside Africa, how they will take actually Yeram? And that's not why we get this DJ in the house, because the DJ is now one of the promoters of African music. So, Ingo Sanchez in Korea so far, and uh, consigning um, the challenges of playing African music, especially as pressing where we say it don't work for uh, an international um, media. Yeah, me go tell us more concerning this. Join me, welcome. Kenya based DJ, DJ Edu in the house. Hey. Ooh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Oshay. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you don't <laughs> learn that one, Oshay. Oh, sure. <laughs> you're learning fast. Oh, more Kenya. <laughs> All right, no, no, you say you're born, you were born and raised in Kenya. And yeah. from there, now you actually start off your career, yeah. you know, with some of the indigenous brands we've for there. And you've even, you're even a presenter at some point, one of the radio stations. Tell yeah. us your journey so far. Yeah. to being this um, DJ to the level where you did now. Yeah, so my mother says that well, I used to cry a lot. But when the music came on, I would stop. Wow. So even I wet myself and the music comes on, I just, so they, they put a speaker near my bedroom. So wow. I would just be awake, but I'd just be listening to music. So I think music was in me before I became a DJ. I think DJing was just a way to express what I love. Uh, but in Kenya, I started off dancing. Mm. There's this one fine girl. No That's pimples. A big girl. And I was like, this girl, and she's like, oh, I like movies. I said, now nah, I'm going to get money now again. Jeez. <laughs> so I, I, I mean, I started dancing to be able to get money. So I would. Uh, you know? Okay. <laughs> so, I'm so I went to these dancing competitions, and you get some little money. Uh -huh. I was able to take out. But then I, I realized that the DJs were getting all the girls anyway. And oh. they were not having to sweat as much and work as hard as me. So I switched my career. <laughs> and from then on, I just love DJing from then on. All right. So uh, apart from the fact, say, yeah. um, you don't actually be inside this industry for a very long time. Tell us some of the challenges where you did face. Uh, the at that time, challenges, DJs were not taken seriously. It was not a career. And most of the people who were in DJing at that time were, you know, school dropouts, all these people. And even back in the day, I think people used to play music. So we should be seen as womanizers and all these things. So it was never an easy career. So for me, I, I decided I'm going to take it seriously. I'm going to take it as a profession. So I moved from Kenya to go to the UK to do audio production, just so that I could show my mom that there's more to this music than just going to the clubs at night, coming back in the morning, coming from the club and meeting people going to church on Sunday, you know, and hiding yourself. So it was more than that. So at least now she appreciates because I, I, I turned a hobby and a love of mine into a career. So going into UK, I, I know say after acquiring the certificate, um, you and I personally can find your way to um, international media and the BBC. And then you can even get a show called Destination Africa. Africa. Yeah. Now tell us the, 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 the different challenges where mm -hmm. you be actually be the face yeah. as a presenter on yeah. that radio show yeah. in promoting African music. Because don't forget you're a DJ on that show. Yeah, so when I went there, I wanted to do hip-hop, R&B, like all of us. All the DJs want to ape what America is doing in Britain. When I went there, it was very hard because there were already people who are established there. Exactly. They, that was their home. They went to school with all the, all, all the executives, all the people in big jobs are their friends. I am new to, mm -hmm. to the scene. So what I did is I started doing African parties because I missed home. So I was going to African parties. Independence, nice Nigeria independence, I go, and I'm like, oh, these are my people food, you know, just the ambience, people are talking a language that I like. So that brought me to the One Extra show because they now started, they brought a new station and they wanted to go out for young people. And there's a lot of young Nigerians, Africans yes. in, in, uh, in, the, in UK. the UK. So to represent them, they said, okay, let's do this. Let's have you doing music for young Africans. Unfortunately, at the time, we didn't have very many African artists. We had mm. maybe Magic System at the time. Mm. One song that would play in every, you know, mm -hmm. in East African music, you play that one magic mm -hmm. system. And then I remember even that time, there was Solek Band, which had Don Jazzy and, and Debanj. Debanj. They were playing there, but before they came back, so there was one song, maybe Tongolo here, maybe an African queen there. We were struggling, Plantation Boy. So we were really struggling. We were playing maybe one South African music and Kofiolo Mide or something. Mm -hmm. So we were really struggling for music. So we ended up playing world music to start off with. But people are not getting it because world music was not for young people. Mm -hmm. So I started to mix hip hop, R and B, dancehall with African music. So when you hear a fella beat with Jay Z rapping on top of it, you're like, ah, ah. so this music is the mm -hmm. same. And that's the way we started to, you know, 
So it, when Beyonce left, like for example, Destiny's Child, I did a Beyonce with Beyonce's music with African music. So people are like, ah, this thing is the same because it's funny. Some people don't connect that the music mm -hmm. is actually the same. When you hear different language, you're like, uh, uh, that's not for me. So from there, people started to tune in, and then now it's you know, as we all know. People are filling out the O2 mm -hmm. arena. 20,000 people are coming to paying their tickets to come and watch African artists. So Beautiful. It's yeah. amazing. Big here. Mm. And now from UK, I know your journey still continues. So uh, after then, what's going to happen <laughs> after the UK? Because I know at some point you'll be winning the best Kenyan DJ for Inside 2004. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. UK. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. that was a big achievement. Yeah. And um, that one, what's going symbolize for your career and what's going happen after you? You, you went on the, on the journey for, to UK? Yeah, I think the being appreciated, especially in a place where you are not born, people didn't mm -hmm. know you, I think it's really good. And mm -hmm. I've always had, I think I have good relationships with most people. You rarely find somebody who says, that Chine do that one. <laughs> that Nigerian <laughs> man, Chine do. <laughs> no, no, you never find, you know, I try to keep those relationships because in life people are up and down. I've seen artists come up, go down. So. And in our careers, it's all about the connections you have and the relationships you have. Mm -hmm. So with that, just help me build bigger relationships. And you know, pe people got more aware of me. And that, I think that award signified that there's more work to be done. Because you always, when people recognize you for something, they quickly forget if you stay on that level. Mm -hmm. You always have to up your levels. So I think it encouraged me to really up my levels and work harder. I like that. Now, moving on from the UK and all the um, journey where you don't actually go, now you're in Nigeria. Tell of us your mission in Nigeria. Uh, of course. We, I had to come back to the place that gave us Afrobeat. Exactly. Hey. To the heartbeat of Afrobeats. Because Nigeria is kind of like the springboard from where other people kind of really honed into this Afrobeats thing. And it's the only, I, I did this uh, program with BBC called The Best Nightclubs in Africa. And at that time, we went across Africa and every club you went to was playing Nigerian music. So there's something about Nigerian music and what it does for Africa, especially modern <coughs> young African music. Mm -hmm. And it was only right that when they're launching this show called This Is Africa, we launch it here. In that, yeah, yeah, exactly, because it's such an instrumental place. In saying that as well, it's also showing Africans that we should be proud of this new oil that we have, mm -hmm. our new diamond, which is our talent and our music and the stories that young people want to tell. So it was, it was, it was only right that we launched it here, and we do a show that incorporates at least the whole of Africa. Because so tell us a little bit of, of certain details, like, I mean, yeah. now nah, nah to call people, people will come inside the studio, can't talk about music, Yes. or I mean, a little bit, so just yeah. give, us, give us a little. Yeah, so what's going to happen is we're going, we have something called 10 in 10. That's like one of the features. So we have 10 songs from 10 different countries in 10 minutes. Okay. Because we realize young people, after one, one, you know, even when you go to the club, the songs are quick. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have time. You, are, you have social media, you have live, you have, yeah, yeah, lots of... Quick, and then we have um, we have a big guest artist, so we'll have big artists, footballers, chefs, artists, and then we also do a spotlight. So there might be a big artist in Namibia that you have never heard of. Mm -hmm. So we'll have we'll speak to them and they'll showcase their music, and then we have a classic because without the them we we wouldn't be here today, mm -hmm. and that's only in 26 and a half minutes. So just a quick short soundbite that you can take home and say ah. You know when you're hungry and you just need one little sandwich, yeah. you just get yes, that. Snack. Uh -huh. That's your snack. So basically, this is Africa show. Go actually promote music, not just in Nigeria, but across Africa, like in Africa, basically. Not showcase, celebrate. Let's make oh, it celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's celebrate, yeah, because there's a big wave. Artists are being given big deals. And, you know, sometimes we, we, f we forget to celebrate. Like, I'll give you a good example. We were, I was talking with uh, one of the presenters, Manny, on Cool FM. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what is your favorite album? And I said, for now, I think my favorite album is Burner Boy. And he asked me why. I think it's just kind of like, it feels to me like he has a spiritual connection. It's not even about the music. Mm. Because anyone else could have done that music and not have gotten the same mm -hmm. reaction. And he's like, yes, Grammy. I'm like, yeah, but no, forget the Grammy. We always wait for somebody else to celebrate us before we celebrate ourselves. Mm -hmm. We knew Burner Boy's album was great. Mm -hmm. We knew it. When we were killing them, sha, sha, mm -hmm. you know, when we were doing all these moves, we know it's great, but mm -hmm. we wait for the Grammys. We're like, no, we're not going to wait for that anymore. Mm -hmm. Let us celebrate our own. 
if other people want to celebrate as well, that's an icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. But you know. I like the fact that you talk about music. Now, as a DJ, truly, all music, all music are good. But what makes a good music? Because the reason why they ask now, now because of the kind of music where they see now. Is it the beats <laughs> or the lyrics? Now, a recent song where they actually try now, now party after, after party. <laughs> and then you go listen to Ram, there is nothing <laughs> else but the party to take. After but the, the party, party after party. Yeah. So as a DJ, yeah. what, which, which make good music? So it is, it's like, I always refer this to food. It's like asking somebody who, whose mother cooks the best food. It's depending on which house you're eating in. Because I, music is also in context, and that's how, what I've learned over the years. There's a song, there's a song, you could go to South Africa, and people are dancing, they're enjoying this song, and you're not getting it. Yes. And you go somewhere in another setting, people are like, what is this you're playing now again? But that's why I'm saying you have to kind of like bring that setting to like Nigeria, take it to Kenya and transpose mm. it. And that's why Nigerian music has become so popular. Mm. Because Nigerians around the world, they feel their music. And because the music is talking to you, the way you relate to it makes me think that that song must be amazing. Because the way it's what making me... What are they feeling me... to? The lyrics or the beats? I think no, the beats... No, because it's from Uganda and partying is a big thing. Oh. So literally when you say party after party, that's what they do. You'll be staying in a five-star hotel, and you'll hear a party. 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 Yeah. And you're like, can you get me a room where I can't hear oh. the, the party? Because that's just their thing. Ugandans, they... As in you, okay, you see like when you drive to the airport, uh -huh. you'll see people have opened their doors, they've put tables, they've got drinks, drinks they're selling, and, they're just, yeah, and just put a, you know, a stereo outside and they're just, you're like, what? this is a club. And you they're see like, like 10, just, they just like to party. So yeah. it connects with them. Oh, so yeah. now I get, so the yeah. music actually connects with it them connects because them. they party so, a lot. Yeah, because now you're like, what? I mean, on, what like is party this? Party after party, yeah. party after party. You know, it's, it's something like, I'll give you a good example, even Nollywood. I said, Chineke, oh, you have finished me. Oh. But that's where, like, hey, mm. this Chineke must be somebody really yeah. great. I just finished this woman. But that's how we connect with Nollywood because mm. it's the expressions. So it's, I think it's just, music is always our connection. Mm. Now, yeah. just like one that. last question again, because yeah. if they look music of today, the mm -hmm. lyrics, the way they write, what they talk about, yeah. I will not say music like in the universal language. You know, yeah. say, a lot of music of this generation, yeah. if it's not about woman, it's yeah. about woman. If it's not about money, it's yeah. about money. The, in the generations of our great grandfathers, yeah. high life, they're talking about the economy, talking about yeah. the government. Nobody say people know they sing that kind of song yeah. now. Yeah, of music. But yeah. in those days, you hardly hear of the shape of a woman. Or say a lot of times yeah. they're talking about the situation of, of how politics is going. I mean, look mm -hmm. at some a lot of the last song, for example, mm -hmm. and here within the lyrics of the song. Of but nowadays, even the vi music videos, all they see, I mean, mm -hmm. we'll see that it's about portraying women. Yes, yeah. there's a, a sensual thing about it in the music of this generation. Could it just be that now because of waiting, we like to we like or now what it is? It is what it is. Yeah. I don't think it's, it is what it is. I think even as people, as people in media, as custodians, as women, as men, it's, it's our duty to teach and to tell them, I mean, the content that you have does this. But mm. I think these, this generation is, is fortunate and unfortunate at the same time because they have too much information and it's very hard to filter what is good and what is bad. So it's what is most hype and the rewards that people are getting for doing them. That's why a song like Party After Party back in the day, I would not even give it a second mm -hmm. chance. But now we are because we're in a time where if that song, you're a DJ and you're not playing it, who is coming to the club? Yes. The owner of the club will say, excuse me, no one is coming. So there's always a knock-on effect. Mm. But we have so much information that we don't know what to filter. Mm -hmm. And I think also because our parents have worked so hard to give us the things that they didn't have, they almost leave us to find our own devices and, and look after ourselves because there's a generation of false parenthood that has, has done. You got to work, you want your children to have everything. Like, I don't want my children to suffer, but you forget to, you know, those little things that, you know, when you're there, I'm like, yeah, please don't do this, please don't say this, you know. I can still hear my mother telling me now. Yeah. Eh -eh, when I'm just about to do something naughty, I can still hear her. You know? That correction. Yeah. Thank you so much, DJ. I don't say you enter inside the house. Talk more no, concerning yeah. your career. Thank, Thank you very much. No. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.